Hello, thank you for joining us for today's ResNexus webinar, Practical AI Applications for Your Business. AI is probably the biggest buzzword topic on everyone's minds over the past couple years, and it's pretty clear we have a lot of big changes coming in the near future, which we are just now seeing the beginnings of. There's all sorts of discourse going on about technology, ethics, legislation, and labor, but what's not being talked about as much is actually how you can use this new technology to improve your business operations. And I mean really practical uses, so. Uh, but first, a little about me. My name is Gavin Wadsworth. I'm a hospitality researcher and marketing writer at ResNexus, and I also manage our webinars. I also have a degree in digital cinema, and if you've seen our new commercial for campgrounds, then you've probably seen something of my work as I, I did write and I also assisted with the production of that project. But let's go ahead and move on to the topic of today's webinar. So what is AI or artificial intelligence? So let's start by defining the term. Google defines artificial intelligence as the theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making, and translation between languages. Now, you might have noticed that's a pretty broad definition. By this definition, a regular old calculator might qualify as AI, since before the invention of calculators, solving math problems was a human thing. It required human intelligence. But on the other side of things, there's the concept of the Skynet AI that takes over the world and controls everything. So this is a pretty broad definition. One common trait that we see in a lot of different AI systems is that they train themselves on data until they produce the kind of output we're looking for. They learn in the sense of trial and error. An AI learning how to play chess never really learns how chess works but it does eventually develop strategies that will allow it to play the game effectively anyway. The reality is that AI is everywhere, and has been for a while. No, we don't have Skynet yet, but AI is a part of our everyday lives. If you're browsing Netflix, AI suggests what shows to see based on your history and preferences. Looking for a job? Your resume is being screened by an AI before a human ever looks at it. What about your smartphone? You ever ask Siri or Google to call someone or search the web for something? That's AI voice recognition. So what's different about AI today? What changed in the last couple years? And this example really tells the story. Both of these images were generated by the AI service Midjourney. It's an image generation AI, and both were generated using the same prompt. Can you guess how much time elapsed between these two images? How, how far did AI have to develop before it can make the image on the right? Well, the left image was generated in February of 2022. The right one was generated in March of 2023. So this is how far the technology advanced in just one year. It went from almost unrecognizable to almost photorealistic in 12 months. And of course, it's still not perfect. Uh, for example, the basketball, if you look at it closely, uh, it's a little too big and it has too many lines on it. So the AI got a little confused about exactly how a basketball looks. And that's basically indicative of how AI has progressed in many different fields in the same time frame. Computation went from being able to do simple things like math problems to performing complex tasks that we tend to think of as only things humans can do. AI can listen to and recognize your voice and the words you speak, then interpret those words as instructions, and then carry out your request. It can generate illustrations as well as nearly photoreal images. It can generate articles and blog posts in just a few seconds, compose music, and much, much more. These rapid developments in AI technology have raised lots of ethical, philosophical, and legal questions which we're still trying to navigate as a society. 
But one thing is for sure, and that is that AI is here to stay, and it's only going to become more smart and more advanced. If you learn to leverage the tools that are out there, you stand to improve your business in a variety of ways. So what are the benefits of AI tools? Well, they essentially fall into three categories. There's time savings, increased value, and increased profits. The number one benefit at present is probably time savings. It used to take several hours to make a blog post. Now it can be done in just a few minutes. As a business owner, time is a precious commodity for you and AI can help save time in a variety of ways. One example of this is with AI chatbots like Ask Suite or even AI phone answering services. In this example, the AI chatbot can understand questions like, what time can I check in? And provides an answer in less than two seconds. And it can also help book the room. These tools can help supplement your team's ability to answer questions quickly, or cover times when no staff is on site or available, which can help improve customer service. This helps increase value by saving your guests time as well. AI can also help you generate content that you wouldn't have otherwise produced due to time, staff, or money constraints. This helps better tell the story of your business and enhance the guest experience. And that ties into increased profits. Not only can AI help generate engaging content that will attract more business for you, but you can also use AI to help inform your pricing strategy. Now, I don't have time to go over every AI application and service out there, so I'm going to focus on three main categories in this webinar. Large language models, image generation, and revenue management. First up is large language models. By far the most well-known example of this is, of course, ChatGPT, but there's also Google Bard and a number of others out there. LLMs are given a large amount of data to process, usually scraped from the internet, and they learn from this data. It then functions as a chatbot that you can talk to, and it will reasonably sound like a human in its responses. You can ask ChatGPT to generate text content for you simply by asking it in natural language. You just type what you'd like it to make for you, as if you were talking to another person, and it's really good at understanding, that's in quotes, what you want. Then it outputs its best guess in just a few seconds. So let me show you some practical uses for this tool that you can use for your business. Here's a prompt that I gave ChatGPT asking it to write a promotional email for a sample campground that I made up. I included all the relevant details, but I didn't worry about putting it together as a finished product. After about 15 seconds, this is what ChatGPT responded with. It provided a subject line with a nice mountain emoji, an invitation to come and stay in the first paragraph, as well as five other sections with headers, a call to action, and a signature at the end. And overall, it's pretty good. But if you look closely, you can see a few areas where it can be improved. For example, this section might be completely unnecessary if your audience is campers who have already stayed at your campground before. And then next, it looks like ChatGPT got a little confused about the promo code we asked it to provide. It wrote that the fourth night is on us, followed by 50% off. So which is it? Is, is the fourth night on us or is it half off? So that would need to be fixed. And I also noticed that it doesn't know the campground as well as we do. So it doesn't have a lot of concrete details or it tries to make up details here and there. And finally, this email is probably way too long. People are not going to read all of that. So I asked ChatGPT to give me a version that's under 200 words. And a few short seconds later, we have a new version. So now you have two different responses, and you can mix and match sections between them and tweak any of the content as needed, maybe add a concrete detail or two. The point is, even though neither of these responses were perfect, they were fast. So maybe it takes you three minutes to write the prompt. 
and then a few seconds to have ChatGPT generate the response, and then maybe five minutes to do some polishing edits and revising. How long would it take you to write an email like this on your own? Probably more than 10 minutes. So the time savings here can be massive. What's more, the spelling and grammar are correct, and the sentences are well-structured. So you're not only making content faster, you're taking human error out of the equation. I found that the kind of mistakes that humans make are easily fixed by the computer, and the kinds of mistakes the computer makes are easily fixed by the human. So if you use both, you have a really efficient process, which can improve your productivity by leaps and bounds. Sometimes the main benefit of tools like ChatGPT isn't that it gives you a finished product you're satisfied with, but rather it activates your brain into figuring out what you are and aren't looking for. Sometimes just seeing an example done poorly can be enough to help you figure out how it can be done well. Kind of like how sometimes you flip a coin to make a decision, but then when you see it lands on heads, you realize you were really hoping it was tails all along. Now let's go over some other practical uses for ChatGPT in your business. I won't be going over these in as great detail for the sake of time, but these should get your brain working on new and creative ways to use it if you haven't already. Did you know that you can use ChatGPT to summarize feedback and reviews to find and address common complaints about your property? So for this prompt, I pasted a bunch of online reviews for a resort property that I found on TripAdvisor and I asked for a summary. This is just a part of the response. ChatGPT is very good at taking large chunks of text and giving you a brief overview of the main talking points, which can be both time-saving and enlightening. So rather than combing through every single review to find the common threads between them, you can have ChatGPT do it all within seconds. You can also use it to respond to online reviews. Not everyone can pull off the professional, grateful, humble, sometimes firm tone that's required for leaving professional review responses. Now, even if you can, it can be fairly time consuming. A simple solution is to paste the positive or negative review into ChatGPT and have it generate a response for you. In addition, there are AI response services in the market that will respond to reviews automatically for you and reference things that the reviewer said in the response. Another thing ChatGPT is great for is generating activity ideas, or really any kind of ideas. For example, you could have it generate an entire scavenger hunt game for you. You can use it on social media posts. If you have a hard time maintaining your property's Facebook or Instagram, ChatGPT can help out in a major way. You could even use it to help you develop a social media campaign strategy to help you increase online engagement. ChatGPT can also revise and proofread your prompts. So if you do have a clear idea of what content you want, but you just need a little help fixing grammar and spelling and word choice, you can do that too. And finally, you can actually learn new skills and concepts from ChatGPT. It's kind of like having your own personal tutor. You can ask specific questions and get specific answers. You can ask it to explain anything from quantum mechanics to revenue management. Though there are some caveats, so let's get into the limitations and drawbacks of this tool. So as time's gone on, users have identified a couple of common quirks in ChatGPT's responses. And the first is that ChatGPT tends to generate responses that are formulaic and predictable. For example, if I asked for a brownie recipe, it would most likely end the response with something like, it's important to note that there are many different methods and types of brownie. Feel free to adjust the recipe based on your own preferences and kitchen appliances. Stuff like that is extremely common. Next, responses are often very stiff and overly formal. ChatGPT likes to give you long sentence structures and sometimes repeat words too close together. It can lack a certain human touch. 
For example, if I was writing an article about how to win at the board game Monopoly, I might say something like, as the game goes on and other players start buying properties that turn into monopolies, the board starts to look more and more like a minefield. But ChatGPT doesn't usually use similes or metaphors or any of those little human storytelling devices, which makes it sound more robotic. And next up is lack of concrete details and depth. I touched on this earlier, but ChatGPT can be pretty hesitant to provide concrete details about things. A lot of the time, responses look great at first glance, but look a little more closely, and there might not be very much substance there. And we tend to call that kind of thing marketing fluff. It can output a lot of words and end up saying hardly anything at the same time, kind of like a politician answering a direct question. And lastly, be aware that Google is watching. If your content has too much marketing speak and doesn't say anything of substance, or is very close to other content word for word, which ChatGPT can tend to do, then Google may notice and penalize the content. Not simply because it's AI-generated content, Google doesn't really care, but simply because it's not valuable content. Another limitation is privacy. Now, I recommend that you never submit sensitive information to a chatbot. Humans can sometimes monitor prompts and responses to check for quality, and also some elements of these chatbots are kind of inscrutable, and there may be a risk of someone being able to access your information, if not now, then at some future point, so just better safe than sorry. Uh, just This is something you should already know, is don't submit sensitive information online. But here's the main drawback of large language models. They don't actually know anything. They only pretend to know. Just like the AI that learned how to play chess doesn't actually know anything about chess, it just pretends to know a lot about chess. There's no conscious mind behind the responses. It's just making a best guess based on the data it has. But it will respond with absolute certainty, regardless of the truth of its response. So, for example, I was watching the show Suits on Netflix a while ago, so I had that on my mind. So I asked ChatGPT a nonsense question. In which episode of Suits does Harvey Specter hit a pinata with a golf club? ChatGPT gave me a specific episode, as well as story context for the scene. But that never happens in the show at all. Just like anything else on the internet, you have to take ChatGPT's responses with a grain of salt and fact check it from other sources. The good news is that it does learn fast. I checked again shortly before I finished this presentation, and it now shows some humility and seems to know the answer. So again, the speed of learning here is pretty amazing. One final note about AI-generated text before we move on. How Google prioritizes search results is based on a lot of factors. Many of these factors are public, but how they work on a coding level is usually kept secret. And the reason for that is Google wants to be a reliable search engine for its users and prevent people from gaming the system. What makes Google a reliable search engine is delivering what people are looking for. And that means delivering quality content. When you understand this, it makes sense that Google doesn't really care about where the content came from so long as it's quality content. So Google has said, our focus on the quality of content rather than how content is produced is a useful guide that has helped us deliver reliable, high-quality results to users for years. So you won't be penalized in SEO for using AI-generated content unless Google sees nonsense marketing speak, which is in reality low-quality content. If AI-generated low-quality content is found on hundreds of websites, Google's going to notice, and my guess is, rank you lower because it can detect a pattern of unoriginal and similar AI content. Whether your content is AI-generated or human-generated or a blend of the two, you just want to make sure that it demonstrates what Google calls EEAT, and that's expertise, experience, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. That's all that Google cares about anyway. Other platforms might have different guidelines when it comes to AI content, and there are AI content detectors out there, so 
you might need to be careful depending on the platform you're using. But for Google and for your website, it doesn't necessarily dislike AI content. And lastly, speaking of Google, I also wanted to tie in Google campaign ads as part of the large language models. So although the setup and execution is less interactive than other models like ChatGPT, Google is also using AI learning. On a high level, Google uses AI to test a wide range of combinations. So when you set up a campaign in Google Ads, you start by uploading up to 20 images and five videos. Then the next step is to add up to 15 short headlines. And then the last step is to add up to five long headlines and four descriptions. Google then takes all of these options and uses its AI to start trying out all the hundreds of combinations that you've provided using images, videos, and text. And after a couple of months, it starts to better understand customer shopping intent and show those more successful combos to those customers that share similar shopping behaviors. Basically, it uses large patterns to understand and determine user intent. But unlike ChatGPT, it forces the answer on potential consumers without them having to ask any questions. Google recommends spending up to $500 per day or unlimited budget for large companies. But in reality, many small businesses are going to spend a lot less. You can even use ChatGPT to write the sentences if you're stuck. That would be AI to enhance AI. Also, uh, this is a side tip that when you're using Google ad campaigns, uh, it could be helpful if you're writing them to write them in an Excel or a Word document to store the text, because sometimes the campaign does not save very smoothly and you might lose what you type. So it's good to have it backed up somewhere else as you're working on it. Okay, let's get back to large language models and talk about pricing. So when it comes to large language models, ChatGPT really is the king for both quality responses and its free plan. All the responses shown in this presentation were generated from the free 3.5 model. And there is a paid plan option for $20 a month. This option, called ChatGPT Plus, includes access to their more advanced model, which also has faster response times and access to some more advanced features. Most notably, this model is able to access and browse the internet to help in its responses, which is something you can't do with the free version. That means it can help you find resources online, as well as access more current data about things. Some people say that GPT-4 provides higher quality responses, while others feel it's about the same, so if you're curious you can try it out, but there's not a consensus on which one is actually better. One thing you'll find when looking at alternatives to ChatGPT is that a lot of them actually use ChatGPT anyway. For example, Jasper is another service, and Jasper pulls responses from GPT-4 in addition to some other tools out there to build its own responses, and then it takes that and tries to match it to your tone and branding. Jasper also provides art generation, template and style uploads, and more. Their pricing ranges from $40 to $100 or more per month, and that's billed annually. Unsurprisingly, Google has their own LLM chatbot called Google Bard. This one is free and has no paid plans, although it is significantly less popular and tends to produce lower quality responses than ChatGPT. Okay, let's move on to the next application of AI for your business, and that's AI image generation. AI image generators work similar to large language models in that they train using a large set of data. But in this case, it's images rather than text. And similar to ChatGPT, it can be tricky to get the generator to make exactly what you're looking for. However, it is capable of delivering impressive results with very little effort. In fact, 90% of the images that you see during this presentation were created using Imagine Art AI. Now, there are a bunch of AI image generators out there. There's Dolly, Midjourney, and Stable Diffusion are probably the three most well-known. Uh, there's also Adobe's Firefly AI, and that's also very impressive. 
but let's jump right into some practical uses for your business. Let's go back to that promo email we made using ChatGPT, assuming we've done some editing and polishing by this point. We would first put the text into our email builder, and it's always good to add a big call to action button at the bottom, but now we need an image to go with it. The email mentions kayaking, so maybe we enter a text prompt into our AI image generator that says, woman kayaking on lake. It then gives us a couple of options. I'll go ahead and put in the first one. But what if we want it to be a couple in the kayak, or more like a poster illustration? Maybe we'll use the couple illustration, so we'll put that in. You might need to use Photoshop to touch up the faces and remove the extra or, but let's switch it back to the single woman again. As you can see, you can change the image concept easily, or create different campaigns. And from this, you can also see the time savings. AI can help provide both the image and the text ideas. It lets you have more professional looking copy and pictures without having to hire a professional writer or photographer. One thing to keep in mind is that this technology is very new. And in some cases, such as Adobe Firefly, the images it creates can't be used for commercial purposes because it uses copyrighted stock images to make new images. One of the main concerns for AI-generated images is the ethical concerns about people's art being used against their knowledge and or wishes. So here's, here's a pretty straightforward example. If there's an artist named Bob and Bob paints in a really unique style with lots of blues and purples, and then finds out that people can type, generate a painting of Mount Rushmore in the style of Bob and instantly generate a painting in his exact style, he has understandable reason to be pretty upset. But it's not always so cut and dry. If you generate a photo real image of the Eiffel Tower, you're not necessarily replicating one photographer's work. The AI is applying what's learned from thousands of photos of the Eiffel Tower from different sources to create the finished product. And then what about a celebrity or a person's image that it generates without permission? You can see why AI art is a pretty heated topic today, and some people are very against it, some people are very much in favor. In the end, this is just a tool that exists, and you decide whether or not to use it. But make sure to read the terms and conditions on any AI image generation technology that you use. Another limitation is that depending on the AI image generator that you use, it will still do weird things to faces, hands, and other elements. For example, this image uses the prompt family camping in tent. It's a pretty simple topic, but I had a hard time with this one. Sometimes you have to be really good at wordsmithing the description, or you can try having it generate in a different style. Illustrations like this tend to work much better. And the last note I want to touch on for limitations and drawbacks is that AI image generators tends to over-exaggerate everything to extremes. In some cases, this can even create lots of confusion. For example, these are two pictures of a baby peacock. The left one is the AI's best guess as to what that might look like, but it doesn't actually know what a baby peacock looks like. Instead, it sees the word peacock and it makes a bird with bright feathers. Then it sees the word baby and makes it small with big eyes but that's actually not at all what a baby peacock looks like. You can see the real one on the right. Like I mentioned before, there are a bunch of different AI image generators out there, and unlike chatbots, they don't usually have a free option beyond the first couple of images. So here's a quick rundown of what you're looking at for price. I'll start with the one used for the vast majority of images you in this presentation, which is Imagine AI. It offers a lot of different effects, styles, and sizes to choose from. This takes some of the typing guesswork out of the creative process. And it's pretty affordable at only $70 a year. There aren't a ton of generators out there with a focus on images in the style of stock photography for businesses, although some can do that pretty well. But keep in mind that a lot of these options might try to give you stylized illustrations and hyper-exaggerated pictures, like the peacock example I just shared. 
With that being said, Jasper tends to appear near the top of a lot of lists for both text and image generation. Having both solutions combined in one package can certainly be very helpful. And in terms of images, it definitely excels at using different art styles. They advertise royalty-free commercial use, no watermarks in the images, and unlimited generations. However, that of course comes with a relatively high price point compared to other options out there. It starts at around $40 a month, with plans that go up in price from there for additional benefits. Once again, this price includes the large language model for Jap Jasper as well. Midjourney is one of the most popular generators out there, and really took the world by storm with its stunning results. This one is unique in that you can access it through the Discord social app, and pretty much only that app. So for people who already use Discord, it's pretty convenient, but for everyone else, it might be an extra step to figure out that platform first. Midjourney typically gives you a free trial period of image generation, after which pricing plans usually start around $10 a month. One of the best uses of Midjourney is actually image upscaling. You can not only generate images, you can import images of your own and upscale and tweak them for higher quality and resolution. It's very versatile and easy to use. Plus, as you can see, it handles photorealism on faces and hands better than some of the others. Dolly version 2 or 3 comes from the same company that developed ChatGPT, which is OpenAI. It's easily one of the top image generators out there, and allows you to combine attributes of different images and edit them to try and get the desired result. Also, Dolly heavily advertises and emphasizes that their images are copyright free, meaning you can use them for commercial use. Pricing wise, Dolly does not have a monthly subscription. Instead, you pay a couple of cents per image generated, and the exact cost depends on the resolution of the image you get. This pay-as-you-go option might be more appealing to a lot of people than a monthly subscription that might go to waste. It also has lower resolution quality than some of the other image generators, and you're stuck with square images, which might not be what you're looking for. Okay, let's move on to the next application of AI for your business, and that's revenue management. You might have heard me talk about this before, but revenue management is the practice of pricing your inventory to match supply and demand, matching the right product to the right customer at the right time and for the right price. Revenue management encompasses a number of different tools in the hospitality industry. There's minimum nights, yield management, dynamic pricing, and much more. There's a science to revenue management, but it's difficult to know what pricing strategy works best. You can't predict the future, so you never know exactly how much money you could have made with different decisions. A major component of revenue management is historical data. Another is to know the price of your competition on the OTAs, and don't forget your occupancy rate. AI excels with training data like this. It can look at enormous batches of data at incredible speed, process it, and give you a recommendation for how to price your inventory for specific dates in the future. That still does, does not mean you can predict the future though. All AI can do is provide its best guess, which is the same thing you can do. The question remains, can AI make better guesses than you can? And if the answer is yes, then you might want to take a look at some AI revenue management services out there. AI and revenue management can provide your business with massive gains and profits, as well as massive time savings. Working out your perfect pricing strategy on your own can be time consuming and hard to prioritize when so many other tasks require your attention to keep your business running. Price Labs is one of the leading pricing tools on the market for hospitality. Their system accounts for many different factors and data to produce pricing recommendations. Examples include historical data about seasonality, day of the week, holidays and events, competitors on OTAs, and more. And it can help you manage your prices for last minute bookings, far out stays, and more. If you trust Price Labs, they can even change the price for you automatically in your PMS system. 
Uh, pricing for their dynamic pricing tool is based on the number of listings, starting at $20 per listing, and decreasing in cost per listing the more listings you have on there. Another revenue manager service is called Beyond. They emphasize that they analyze competitor data as well as historical data to help you price your inventory as effectively as possible. Unlike Price Labs, who charges a flat fee based on the number of listings, services like Beyond's charge a percentage off all bookings, similar to an OTA, maybe somewhere around 1%. Another popular one is Room Price Genie. This one charges a monthly cost starting at $153. Some other ones include Real Page, which is real estate and long-term rental specific, and you also have Price Point and Take Up. Most of them range in the $200 to $400 price range per month. And just like Price Labs, some of them can change your price automatically in the PMS systems they are integrated with. So if you're interested in adding a data-driven AI revenue manager to your business, those are some things to keep in mind. So with tools like these, will AI in revenue management replace humans? And the answer is, we don't really know. But here's a good example, self-driving cars. Every time there's a self-driving car that's involved in an accident, it blows up all over the news. But there are tens of thousands of man-made car crashes every single day, and those don't usually get a news headline. From a safety standpoint, self-driving cars do not have to be 100% flawless. They just have to be better than humans. The same could be said of AI in revenue management. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if it can perform better than a human, then it's objectively better for your business. But this does not mean that AI should be allowed to run unsupervised, far from it. And there are certain aspects of the job that the machine doesn't understand. It can only operate off of the data it's provided and within parameters it understands. For example, let's say you do some renovating on your cabin rentals. You spruce up the decor and add a pool table. Does the AI recognize the added value of your property? Maybe, given enough time, but it's always important to monitor what's going on and make adjustments as needed. In addition, AI has sometimes been known to be overly aggressive with pricing. If the AI is right, then that means your inventory has been pretty underpriced for a while. If it's wrong, then you might see your occupancy tank if you follow its advice. That's why human oversight is so important, because AI can sometimes be irrational or just plain wrong. Rather than going into the specific limitations and drawbacks of AI and revenue management, I'm going to expand it now to cover most every type of AI application out there. First, AI as we know it today is fundamentally uncreative it can only make predictions and decisions based on the data set it was trained on, which is limited by definition. An AI image generator can't create an entirely new and unique art style. A chatbot cannot come up with a truly unique story, and a pricing tool cannot operate outside the bounds of its parameters. Not only that, but AI tends to not be very creative even within its bounds it will naturally gravitate towards the most predictable, safe, and centered result. For example, if you tell an image generator to give you an image of an airplane, it will probably show you a full shot of an airplane in midair, or maybe grounded at an airport. It wouldn't think to try showing a view of the airplane's wing from inside a window seat. And going back to chatbots, because they don't actually understand what they're saying, they have a hard time expounding on certain responses. And that, of course, ties in with lack of depth or understanding intent. Working with an AI system can be frustrating because it seems so human-like in some ways, but it's fundamentally different. It can't seem to understand some of the most basic things some of the time. Then there are AI hallucinations, where it comes up with a solution that is entirely off-the-wall crazy or just definitely wrong or it can't draw hands and faces for some reason. This can be extra frustrating, because it's the kind of mistake that a human would avoid making. 
Another potential drawback is a hypothesized data collapse. AI needs new, fresh data to train itself upon. This is tricky because many systems scrape data from the internet. But ever since 2021 or so, the internet has been filling up with more and more AI-generated content. And there have already been some preliminary studies that show how AI tends to degrade when it trains on AI data rather than human data. Kind of like when you make a copy of a copy of a copy, AI gets worse and worse with each generation when trained on itself or other AI. Some people are concerned that this will eventually lead to a data collapse, and our AI chatbots, image generators, and more will suddenly get a lot worse. Like an echo chamber. So while the future of AI looks very promising, it could also be worrying in this regard. We're not sure yet how true this is, but it appears that the development of AI is not the same as development in other technology sectors like batteries and smartphones. All right, and with that, we've come to the end of today's presentation. If you enjoyed this webinar and would like to view any of our past ones, you can do so by going to our website, resnexus.com. When you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a webinars button, which will take you to our entire library of past webinars. And you can also register for upcoming webinars on this page. And now we have some time set aside for a Q&A. Now, keep in mind for this that I am not an expert in AI development, so I may not be able to answer some of your more advanced questions, but I will do my best to help you out or at least point you in the right direction. All right, and while we're waiting for questions to come in, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone for taking the time out of your day to attend this webinar. Really appreciate you doing so. All right, we've got one question. Does ResNexus use AI for its ultimate marketing package? Um, to my knowledge, no. Uh, and if it would, if if there would be any AI used, I imagine it would just be you know whatever's built in with Google Ads, uh, like I talked about earlier. Uh, Google Ads use uses some kind of uh, uh, you know training data to help try and make the most effective ads. But beyond that, I'm not aware of any sort of AI stuff that we do on that front. Uh, another question, does ResNexus offer some chat GPT-like services? Uh, no, we don't currently integrate with anything like that. Um, however, there are services out there. Um, like I, men I mentioned towards the beginning of the presentation that there's services to have to help you automatically respond to online reviews. Um, so those are out there, but we don't uh, integrate with those at this time. I see another question. Can AI image software take your current photo and create different images or textures with that photo? And the answer to that is probably yes. It definitely depends on the platform you're using. Um, I know uh, generators like Midjourney allow you to make variations on photos, and there's other ones. Like, even if you use, um, I believe the latest edition of Photoshop has generative fill which allows you to add or subtract elements and kind of change parts of an image. And that seems to work pretty well a lot of the time. But uh, another question, how can I integrate this with ResNexus to provide my guests with res with reservation info? Um, so I'm, again, I'm not quite sure what's meant by this question, but uh, if you're talking about like a chat response, um, so I believe uh, I haven't. I don't have a lot of research in front of me on this, but there are some services out there, and I forget their names. So you'll have to forgive me, but that will kind of help you create kind of a virtual concierge. So if you type virtual concierge, that might help you find what you're looking for. Um, we don't specifically integrate with anything like that at this time, so you'd have to investigate and see on their end how that would work. But those kinds of things are available out there on the market right now. All right, and it looks like we've come to the end of the questions for today. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone once again, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.